this is Lady Vanessa Dalton, and welcome to True Tuesday. Now, I know you all have been enjoying Mr. Eric. He is back again, so you know what to do. Go around the house, let everyone know that True Tuesday is on. Go get on your iPad, your computer, your laptop, whatever you use to watch us with. And most of all, don't forget your notebook paper, and don't forget your Bible, and come on, and let's enjoy Mr. Eric again. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us again for True Tuesday. We appreciate your presence here on Facebook. Uh, as you know, I'm going through Luke chapter 20 this month, and I'll be picking up right where we left off in Luke 20, 20 through 26. And let's start off with a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day and for our life, health, and strength. Lord, we're thankful for your keeping us from one week to the next. And Lord, we ask you as we get ready to open up the word, Lord, let me be able to teach it with authority and with clarity so that it can be useful in the lives of the listeners. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So we're going to jump right into the text. Again, it's Luke 20, 20 through 26, and it reads, So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be righteous, that they might seize on his words in order to deliver him to the power and the authority of the government. Then they asked him, saying, Teacher, we know that you say and teach rightly, and you do not show personal favoritism, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, Why do you test me? Show me a denarius. Whose image and inscription does it have? They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. But they could not catch him in his words in the presence of the people, and they marveled that his answering kept silent. So this week, we see they're back at it trying to trick Jesus again. They had just tried to trick him and get him to say something blasphemous so they could uh, condemn him in a religious sense. Now they're trying to trick him into saying something that could be used to take to the government and say, hey, look, this guy is plotting a sedition against Rome. He doesn't believe in the Caesar. He's against the state. So now we can get him on the religious thing. We're going to get him in trouble with the civil authorities. So they didn't care at all about whether Jesus paid taxes or not. They didn't really care what his answer was. They just want, they wanted a certain answer. They wanted him to say, don't pay taxes. And then they could go to Caesar and say, he says, don't pay taxes. We need to kill him. But Jesus, again, what he was was smarter than them. And what he did in his, in his intelligence was to split things into two spheres of influence. You have the ecclesiastical or the spiritual, and then you have the governmental sphere. So what he was saying was, hey, over here, Give God what's his. Over here, give Caesar what's his. Do the spiritual things in the spiritual realm. Do the things that you need to do as a citizen over here and do them well. He wasn't trying to cause any type of, of division between the spiritual and, uh, well, any type of conflict, let me say. He wasn't trying to say the religious should be against the secular. Some people, though, have taken this and turned that into Jesus says don't vote. Now, this is something that I think is important as we're going into the election season. Early voting has already started. Uh, the election day is in a couple of weeks. So Jesus wasn't preaching political pietism, which is this belief that Christians shouldn't be involved in, in politics or we shouldn't be involved in our culture at all. We should be. We should not make it the main thing. That's the, that's the issue is keeping your priorities straight. Some people, like I said, some people like this and, and make it out to be what well, Jesus is saying we shouldn't be voting. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't run for school board. We shouldn't have Christians running for mayor. We shouldn't have this. Well, if we don't use our influence in those ways, we can't, we can't bring people in just by being in the, in the church house. So Jesus wasn't saying that. We do have responsibilities as citizens. Now, our first citizenship is we are citizens of the kingdom of God, first and foremost. That should always be how we conduct ourselves. But there is nothing wrong with going to vote. No matter who you vote for, vote your conscience. There's nothing wrong with running for office. Just do it in the integrity of the Lord. There's nothing wrong with helping people get elected. Just make wise decisions in who you're going to support. And do it to the glory of the Lord. But you don't just have to sit back in your house and not do anything because that's not what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, there's a time and a place for this, there's a time and a place for that. Make sure you put your priorities in the right place. 
Don't let things that are going on in the government, in politics, and in the culture become the only thing that you think about, that that becomes your driving force. You've got to remember, you are an ambassador of Christ if you're a Christian. You belong to a different kingdom. Remember that you're a sojourner here. You're passing through. But while you're passing through, try to make it a little bit better. Try to leave it better than you found it. So, you, yeah, you can be involved in these things. You should be involved in these things. Just don't put the things of the world above the things of God, and then you'll be okay. So, again, I want to thank you for listening to me this afternoon, this evening. Uh, if you've ever been eating on a Sunday morning, we would love to see you here at True Word Fellowship. We are located at 310 West Meadow Road here in Eden. Our Sunday school starts at 9. Our regular morning worship service starts at 10. And we would love to have you come worship with us. And Lord, and we're just going to go ahead and go out in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity to have opened your word. And Lord, I hope that it was a blessing to those who, who heard it. Lord, let us always remember that we are ambassadors of your kingdom, but we also have responsibilities in the world that we live in. Let us always find the, the proper balance to do the things that we should do as citizens of the world, but to always do everything to your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.